behalf of the board of shruti of philadelphia and all of the rasikas here uh, let me welcome dr shriram parshuram to the live zoom link uh, in our midst uh, we at shruti believe that uh, we are all uh, nado pasakas of of some uh, form uh, we all feel that electric sense uh, of a well presented live concert and a sense of oneness with shruti and nada during that magical time period um uh, today's presentation by dr shriram uh, was originally planned uh, to be the second part of our tyagraj aradhana celebration following the pancharatna kriti rendition so uh, due to various reasons uh, this could not happen uh, but now we can look upon this as an extended uh, aradhana uh, almost two months long culminating in the community singing event next month uh, oh, today's presentation from dr shriram was a fitting homage to the concept of nada as well as tyagraj swami's worship of nada uh, sir your choice of kritis uh, the narrative you wove through them showed your mastery of both the sangeeta and the sahitya aspects of this great body of work that saint tyagraj has left for us you reeled us all in with a powerful beginning where you connected chittaranjani to the notes of the samaveda Uh, and you moved on through various highlights uh, like the comparison of lord rama's attributes to aspects of nada in that powerful arabi kriti uh, to towards the end the celebration of sound uh, in the evergreen sobil of saptaswara these were all beautifully brought out by you and i'm sure that we will all listen to these kritis with a renewed understanding and enjoyment uh, dr shriram on behalf of the shruti board we thank you profusely for taking the time in spite of your uh, you know cold uh, and and illness uh, for taking the time and making the effort to prepare this excellent thematic presentation for our audience and we also thank uh, ramanath nayar of artry for his excellent work in recording this program and making it to us available in a timely manner so uh, with that uh, let me uh, you know start off with the the q and a and uh, several of our listeners uh, you know uh, of of shruti members have posted questions and uh, myself and lata suresh will 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 go through these with you uh, and uh, uh, starting off uh, first first question uh, from myself as well as from others uh, including uh, revati uh, and uh, mani subramanian uh, would you agree that among the trinity tyagaraja was the one who gave the most prominence to the idea of nada and raga as entities to be worshiped uh, or are there many examples of compositions by dikshitar and shama shastri as well that highlight nada namaskaram and thank you for your very kind words om sri guru bhyo namaha um i feel we don't have enough um insight or information available to make a realistic and objective comparative analysis uh, between uh, you know muthu swami ji ki sir tyagaraja and uh, shama shastri and other great composers um yes but one thing can be said that in terms of uh, the expressiveness and uh, the rich uh, descriptive and uh, sharing kind of perspective that tyagaraja brings uh, in his compositions is unparalleled mm. it is not clear we cannot say that for the others nada was probably uh, not so significant but from the sahitya from the sahitya it is very clear that tyagaraja is a very very expressive song song master kriti master because uh, his emotions his travails his uh, victories his uh, his life history everything you find within his compositions and hence i think he was the most expressive of of the three composers in terms of and hence uh, that is also probably one of the reasons why his kritis catch hold of the listener because they resonate at a very emotional level and also related to that is what i think uh, he is very clear about wanting to express everything through his kritis uh dikshit definitely was not 
Dikshitar was a very mature, uh, a very uh, self-contained uh, Sri Vidya Upasaka. So that kind of restraint and that kind of Vedanta Bhava probably was the reason why he never shared emotions in his kritis. Right? He never expressed what he felt. It was, it was Tattva. It was uh, uh, the various aspects of Sri Vidya that found a way mm. into his compositions, whether it be the Navavarnas or Navagrahas. There was so much of Indian culture and the spiritual basis and the worshipping culture, etc. So many aspects of it. It was very less of him and his emotions and his relationship. Of course, we know that Tirvayar Tyagaraja Swami was his one of his was his Ishta Devata and Muttukumara Swami because of the uh, because of his naming were very dear to him. But we don't know that very clearly from the compositions. Mm -hmm. The Tyagaraja, you know very, very clearly because the emotional tugging at heartstrings when he talks about Rama or Sita or Lakshmana or even the Devi, you know, is very, very evident. And hence his love for Nada and his elaboration and reveling in Nada is also very evident from the Kritis. Mm -hmm. So from the Kriti standpoint, with Shyama Shastri, it was again a sense of uh, surrender. You know, that is uh, wherever wherever I go, it is it is Kamakshi, it is Ambal who who I seek refuge in, who needs to come and lift me up, protect me. So that bhava is is of course very very beautiful, but the bhavas that the emotions that Tyagaraja captures in his kritis is much much more varied and very very wide. The domains are very wide. That's my humble opinion. It's not a comparative uh, evaluation at all. It is just that Tyagaraja, whatever he felt, he, he, he embodied in his kritis. That may, that may not have been the case of with, uh, with uh, either, Shama, either Shama Shastri or Muthu Swami Dikshita. But yes, Dikshita at many places refers to uh, the goddess, uh, as the giver of Nada, as the giver of Sangeeta, there are various references to Veena and etc. So there are, but not as direct and as comprehensive as Tyagaraja has done. From his Sahitya alone, I'm, I, I, we can comment. Other, other things are beyond our uh, scope of knowing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lata? Absolutely. Thank you, Sri Ramji. Continuing. Uh, this question is from Renuka. Uh, she's one of the Shruti, Ma, Shruti uh, from the Shruti community. She would like to know if you equate Nada with pure sound. She, I appreciate the concept of Omkara and Nada being intertwined, but she wonders if Sri Ramji, you could find other nuances in the concept of Nada. Oh, no. Nada is. Nada is so beautiful and uh, a millions of nuances in it. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, of course, it's not a very concrete uh, and fixable concept. It is how every individual relates to it. The possibilities within a concept allow it to be very, very multifariously interpreted and internalized. Mm. So I have read four or five books on Nada by not just Indian spiritualists and Indian thinkers, but even from the West. I've, I've read works of, by mathematicians about Nada, mm. you know, about, uh, you know, uh, whether it be Niels Bohr, scientists who speak about Nada in, in, in different ways, mm. you know, and uh, of course, philosophers and, uh, you know, great thinkers have always uh, reveled in the idea of the primal vibration, mm. uh, sound as the most uh, uh, potent and uh, powerful creative force within the universe. Mm. So whether you call it Pranava or Nada or in whatever language, you know, sound has always occupied a great sense of uh, primacy in the human mind. Absolutely. And, and how one looks upon it. That's why I said that somewhere in the leg I think I said, I'm, I'm not sure, that Nada is like consciousness. We relate to it at different levels, at different uh, 
uh, times in our lives differently because it is not a concept that can be fixed but yes in in in, in the indian spiritual sense uh, nada is pranava mm-hmm. that pranava nada uh, the omkara if i may in a very reductionist way the big bang is can be equated to you know the big bang in astronomical astrophysics and the vibrations that put forth all of existence uh and the beginning of time etc so many other concepts related all of them relate very they they fit in like a glove with our spiritual idea of nada That's nada true. is the manifest is what we hear sound correct i uh, but nada is the life force and somewhere in a hindustani composition nada ko na bhed jaane jo jaane wahi guni kahave mm-hmm. and in the in the antara it comes uh what does it come gave guni gandharva nad ko dvait roop no advait ko dvait roop nad ne kar dikhaya hmm that is the concept of nada is advait it is not manifest correct but nada presents it as a manifest you know so even in kabir you find the idea of had and anahad that which is manifest that which is bound and that which is unmanifest and that which is unbound you know so the 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 realm of nada is so vast and so many great thinkers and spiritual uh, people so nada is not reflected to music alone is also what i am but music is the manifestation of that exactly. and 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 because there is a sense of uh, beauty you know the sound is so beautiful you know when you say so that is why satyam and shivam and sundaram are are all one and the same That's so the true. wherever there is beauty beauty is a beauty is also satyam so it is when you are trying to relate to that as a spiritual seeker when you are trying to relate to beautiful sound a sound that uh, you know lifts you up from your uh, limited existence to that which is the prapancha the entire Absolutely. universe that is what for a musician and for a music rasika it assumes that special significance of of a beautiful sense of belonging to the universe very well said yeah. thank you thank you over to you balaji thank you uh, so um, more actually there have been quite a few more questions on the concept of nada itself maybe i i can ask one more um Yeah, yeah this is from prabhakar uh, again one of our long time members uh, nada is in our understanding the most fundamental source of all sound taking on progressively more concrete expressive and gross forms as it becomes audible sound so yeah. in this sense nada is a spiritual and mystical thing beyond the physical world would you agree and could you expound on that yeah there are a lot of instances when we deal with language words like spiritual mystical all of them uh, you know each of us interpret it very differently but yes uh, for all practical purposes what uh, the gentleman has referred to is absolutely true uh, there are different levels at which it it shows itself it starts meaning in different ways to different people at different levels from the very subtle from the very uh, the graces of existence to the most grossest of the biggest manifestations uh it also relates to how you are relating to nada how each individual relates to nada there is a satyam but there is also the idea of us relating to that satyam so we relate in different ways i always think of uh, music as a very good example of how each one of us in our in our own limited ways of listening from early childhood to our upbringing to our training uh, to our listening to different kinds of music from all over the world how one grows uh, how the the process of growth within the domain of sound you know is what makes us deeper and deeper and and we also judge we also decide as to what is nada we may not articulate it to ourselves many times but all of us 
arrive at certain ways in which we think ha ah, this is so beautiful you know so it can be bade gulama likha sahab it can be michael jackson it can be md ramanathan it can be brindama it can be vishwa sir it can be mali it can be uh, t n krishnan sir it can be you it can be me so it's it's that kind of uh, it's so encompassing it's very difficult to pin down something which is so all encompassing you know so yes yeah on on uh, the the observation is 100% correct i agree with that thank you lata absolutely uh going on this this question is from devati uh you know your president of shruti uh, for this year uh, her question is saint tyagaraja is believed to have received the swarana swaramava the treatise of sage narada himself and he refers to this in the kriti swararaga sudha and shankara bannam yeah. you elaborated yeah. a little bit in that yes can yes. you elaborate and are there such references in other kritis as well the swararnava uh is uh yeah sage narada himself supposed to have come in the form of an of an old saint to his home and he left a bundle and of course as is the custom in our traditions he was welcomed into the home by tyagaraja himself but tyagaraja was about to do his puja and uh, sage narada this old man decided told that i will go have a bath in the river and come back and then tyagaraja was supposed to serve him uh, lunch or food or whatever but that that uh, old man never came back and in the dream tyagaraja uh, he appeared again in tyagaraja's dream and told that whatever i have left behind my bag it contains this uh, book why why don't you open it and see it so that is the that is the general historical reference that we have to the swararnava but the swararnava was physically uh, you know it didn't survive i mean tyagaraja passed away he also uh, the, the the book also the collection was also not to be found balaja pet venkatramana bhagavadar his student says that along with the rama sita lakshmana hanuman murti that tyagaraja worshiped daily the swararnava book was also there in the same puja space asana it also was there is what he says uh, and uh, of course tyagaraja had uh, mastered the other three tises like the natya shastra naradiya shiksha etc mm. that is very clear the students the shishya say and uh, hmm. so th- there is uh, so it's a very difficult thing to uh, you know come to a conclusion as to what role swararnava played in tyagaraja's mm. life because he himself uh, doesn't really elaborate upon that and it is a mixture of both uh, accounts that people say and uh, whatever is the real uh, factual happening we we are not very clear hmm i agree thank you yeah. sir thank you yeah. see i am trained as both uh, i'm i'm trained in musicology and ethnomusicology so there is a certain sense of uh, objectivity also that i have to the idea of research has to support my that kind of uh, though though i am i consider myself to be a mix of both the very open uh, tradition loving but yes at the same time i i cannot totally take at face value whatever stories uh, are uh, i i revel in them they reveal different things but from the historical point of view from the point of view of chronicling you know they pose certain issues that's what yeah well taken yes thank you um, so um, so the next question is from uh, uh, sindura shridhar um, huh? is there any insight into whether tyagaraja may have thought about the lyrics first and then used a fitting ragam or vice versa because in some ways i feel it may give us an idea whether he prioritized bhakti over nada or other way well it can it can always be a mix of all these processes um i personally think that tyagaraja is a very very beautiful example of a very uh, exceptional uh, what can i say intuitive sense of art or music or composition and at the same time 
a very analytical intellectually deep and uh, a very brilliant intellect you know so there are many who will say that these things came to him from somewhere else but i that doesn't help me understand chagraja uh, well uh, so i always mm-hmm. think that i always uh, never take away from the intellect of god's grace the in- intellect also is god's grace it doesn't need to be as if uh, it is coming out of the blue you know the intellect can be a very beautiful vehicle for very beautiful things to manifest so for tyagaraja uh, since he was a very learned person and since he was uh, his compositions indicate that he had gleaned a lot from badrachal ramadasa in terms of uh, the spiritual basis and the poetic basis and the adhyatma ramayana that he was very well trained in you know uh, so the the whole rama process in terms of worshiping rama and the sahitya was something which was very very innate within him because that's what he had studied from very early childhood right so the so the 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 whereas the music probably required uh, a process of we can we can only surmise it was a combination of intuitive uh, tunes uh, or melodies or fraction or fragments of melodies which because of his very great skill of putting things together he was a great uh, weaver of designs tyagaraja so whether it be in any of these ragas he could very beautifully come up with uh, very complete designs sound designs and and with the vage kara with all all the vage karas you can see that it's very dif- dif- difficult to separate the two processes the sahitya karta and the sangeeta karta happen to be simultaneous the, the brain or and the human spirit are participating in that activity of composition almost simultaneously but yes sometimes jagaraja shows a great sense of an analy- an analytical approach you know when he designs in his designs you can see that the the analytical aspect of the human mind you know uh, and uh, so the, the i believe that the two can coexist very wonderfully the bhava laden uh, bhakta that tyagaraja was and the exceptionally intelligent uh, creator or designer that he was you know so i it's very difficult to uh, lay a finger and say which came first maybe in some compositions uh, it it was a raga phrase or a murchana mm. that that into which the sahitya fell beautifully because i will tell you the the process in sah- in many tyagaraja compositions is is very beautifully laid out the planning within it is very very complete is like an architect you know in swaradaga in swaradaga sudha in chakrabharanam or in uh, you know kaliki uh, undegada you will see that his plan is so foolproof it is the mm. best plan you know so in many ways he is also being an architect of sorts how he builds the kriti up how he builds the raga up now so there is no need for us to um uh, you know uh, ask the question we can ask the question for us but there is no need to come to any conclusion on that is what i i really think i agree yeah. i agree thank you sir um yeah. moving on to the next question this question is from suresh and yeah. he asks do you think he was indeed giving a public message even though he often addressed the mind manas yeah this is a method uh in a lot of the kirtana bhajana padati mm. uh, and this is a something of a of a overarching philosophy of even for example tukaram in one abhang says very matter of fact all this i know i know uh, the reality i have realized i am here only as a upakara for you mm. i still hang on to this life i am on earth because as a favor so that i can pass on the message so of course but this is never the wisdom of the great saints is that they understand the frailties of the human mind and it's so the process is never one of preaching 
right? Whenever somebody preaches to you, it is from a slightly higher point of view, correct? That is why we never take too kindly to preaching. That's uh, right. Yeah. So, but when it is something which is of a reflexive nature, right. of self-reflexive, when you are telling yourself, so your struggles that you have been through, and your great moments that you have been through, O Manasa, that O Manasa can be your own mind, and also the mind of the listener. So it is not; it, it need not be fixed upon a, whether he is telling himself or whether he is Correct. telling you. Correct. At one level, both are valid. Is what Correct. I I think. Many times, his O Manasa can be because Tyagaraja was very clear about his uh, criticism of uh, uh, fake vidwans and vidwans who are arrogant, uh, who claim to know about Raga Tala because he met a lot of them also in his lifetime, mm -hmm. and so he's very. He's very honest about his impressions. Mm. He's not politically correct. You know, he, he doesn't believe in political correctness. So he very clearly uh, says that in so many of his compositions. So definitely there is a sharing. When you say, oh, Manasa, there is a sense of sharing and not preaching. Mm. That's right. So that, that is a very beautiful vehicle by which you are participating, participating in the spiritual growth or in the growth of the happiness of the listener. That's true. You know, so, yeah. um, Wonderfully said. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. So, so the next question is again uh, uh, from Prabhakar. Uh, he he asks about the more expressive form uh, of the raga as a starting point. Uh, you know, and the one question he has is the match between the raga bhava and the sahitya bhava. Um, you know, Prabhakar feels that this is not always a match. Uh, one example is Kanakana Ruchira, where the melancholy Raghavava does not necessarily match the celebratory Sahitya Bhava. Yeah. Uh, what is your view on that? Okay, so you should remember that we are functioning within the rubric of whatever you have heard, correct? Whatever we have here hearing of these Kritis is going to be very, very, very different from how Tyagaraja would have sang. Sangha. What your idea of Varali is. Your idea of Varali is limited by what you have heard. Right? That is not the idea of Varali. Varali is much, 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 much more than that. Logically speaking, you hear within your lifetime, I'm being, I'm, I, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm being very honest here. In our lifetime, we hear some Varali, correct? But whether that is actually the Swarupa of the Raga, we don't know. According to me, the Raga is absolutely neutral. Every Raga. We have put certain, there is a certain conditioning that we have undergone as to what bhava it is, whether this is pathos. What is pathos itself? What is, what is where, where does bhakti, where does the bhava of bhakti end and where does the bhakti of uh, bhava of pathos begin? Where does the, the, the bhava of surrender end and where does the bhava of pathos again begin? These are not clear lines. Right? We have been conditioned to say Sahana is a little sad or Varali is sad sounding. But Varali, Varati, it comes from Varati Todi. Varati Todi is a very beautiful, resonant morning raga in Hindustani music. Right? The word Varali also in, in Sanskrit means the, the honey bee. The honey bee is anything but path, pathos. It's active and full of uh, that energy. So, Shall I sing you a very two lines of a very happy Varali? Oh, absolutely. Right? Please. Yeah. Padani Rafa Magaga Gadama Garisa Nigariga Ma Padama Padani Just because something is soft and delicate doesn't mean it is pathos. Right? Dani Sani Dabama. Padani Gama Bada Sani Dagani Dama Dagari Dani Kanakana Ruchira. And always remember celebration. We have we have we, we are living in times where our notions of these things are so so conditioned and limited. Today uh, a child doesn't know doesn't know how to celebrate. You know, unless you have a beer and some loud music uh, playing. You, 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 are, you, are, uh, you are thought to be a misfit, that you don't know how to chill or to, to relax or to have a good time, right? 
these are all things which are associated with certain things right if you are if you don't believe in going to parties you are, you said that you are, you, you are a, you are a bore correct now what are, are these real constructs they are not so even a kriti or pama pada pama i don't think it is pathos pama pada pama nida pama dama paga gama dani magadi disani garisa so the raga is free from all bhava the raga is true that's why the devata the raga devata jagraja is a very good example as to how he will compose bhava the sahitya will be absolutely polar dial diametrically opposite and he will put that sahitya in the same raga as if he's telling you that hey don't confuse the two you have to do the growing to understand that this raga can can um, can convey any bhava that you give it it's up to you it's a limitation of ours it's not a limitation of the raga the raga is infinite very, so very for example in, for, for example even in sahana and all these compositions so many compositions which are full of life and full of joy but we have this con- conditioning that it is karunya that it is uh, uh, so karasa all these things are matters in which we have condition so i always believe that you know these ragas are absolutely infinite they will take on any shape anything that you want to give it you know so uh, mohana mohanam can sound very beautiful very endearing mohanam can also be very path- pathos Tagaraja is a very good example. If you go through his uh, the rela- the the way the juxtaposition of the Kriti in Sahitya and the Raga Bhava, you will find that he is actually breaking this myth that this Raga is this mood or this uh, Rasa. He actually breaks that myth, and it's a very beautiful uh, thing to remember because he has gone past it, right? And the Bheda. that dvaita he has gone past and and hence is very natural for him for us we have to do the prayatna and be on that process of understanding that raga, raga can be anything you want it to be great thank you sir that's a very illuminating insight yeah oh. lata you are on mute i think you sorry sorry thank you shriram ji uh, we have couple more questions do you, you how is your bandwidth looking to take couple more questions sir no problem no problem okay. please go ahead okay okay um i i have couple of questions from mani subramaniam and uh, ah. the question is uh, one of them is how many other composers have dwelt with nada for instance dikshida's very first krit, uh, kriti starts with yeah. shri nada di guru guho um, shri natha di Nathadi. 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 Yeah, that Nathadi. refers to his guru. It's his guru, Chidambara Nathan. Right. Chidambara Nath, a yogi, whom he's refers referring to. Anyway, yeah. And the other question is: in in Raga Ratna Malika, Jay doesn't Tyagaraja Swami claim that he has composed kritis and on hundred ragas? More than hundred ragas. Okay. Much much more than hundred ragas. You did mention that in your uh, in your. Uh, Uh, in talk. fact the the number of ragas that he he is said to have created okay he stated he said to have uh, come up with for the first time are more than 80 80 uh, and so then then you have to account for all the sahanas and sarangas and shankaravarnams and todis and bhairavis and kalyanis and all that karayapriyas and all that okay. the, his own uh, creations are more than 80 got it got it yeah thank you thank you so thank you uh, so next uh, we have a question by uh, shri swaminathan um, what he is asking is uh, you know even during the course of this q and a you have expressed you know the appreciate that the appreciation of nada is somewhat subjective uh, at the individual level uh, so from that point of view uh, we cannot really uh, compare the, the 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 trinity composers in terms of their how they tackle nada uh, and say one is better than the other uh, would you agree yeah. with that yes from the sahitya see now when we look at the composition we are looking at how each of them 
because the sahitya is the only thing we have we don't have their singing right we don't have their sound yeah. so very it's impossible so sahitya is we draw conclusions and whatever in insights based on sahitya alone nothing else from the sahitya point of view like i said probably tyagaraja was the most versatile in terms of what all topics he ca- covered that's like that's like saying uh, you know uh, what's worth that's like comparing what's worth with a modern songwriter you know the, the domains are different that's all it does it doesn't there is no uh, qualitative judgment there is mm. what i'm trying to tell yeah mm. i understand i understand um this is one of the last questions um that we are going to be um you know asking today and yeah. having lived during the same time as muthuswami dikshadar one sees tyagaraja's focus on carnatic la- landscape more than hindustani what is your take on this is a, is a question asked by suresh for me um uh, yes uh from the point of view of historical input dikshit had traveled to the north much more that's right yeah he stayed a lot in varanasi he traveled he was a what is called a parivrajaka mm-hmm. that is he he took the path that shankara took adi shankara took so he traveled all the pithas like adi shankara traveled up, up to kashmir and this jalandhar uh, saurashtra and uh, east and west the entire breadth of the country he has covered correct mm-hmm. by pada yatra uh, so muthuswami dikshita being a very uh, a vedantin and uh, advaitam has traveled also and hence his interaction with uh, the north and its music was definitely much much more and there is a conscious effort and a very beautiful urge within him to bring it within his sense of music so that's mm. why but but tyagaraja is a, a no less an eclectic uh, uh, because that's the right. bheda is not there in them i i believe that that bheda and that boundary is not there wherever they they heard beautiful music whether it be swadhitna or shama shastri or whatever you know Correct. so for example one one or two krutis is enough for me to tell for me to understand how eclectic uh, ಇಂತಸೌಖ್ಯ ಮನಿನ್ನೆ ಜಪ ಜಾಲ ಎಂತೋ ಮೋ ಎವರಿ ಕಿದೇಲು ಇಂತ ಸೌಖ್ಯ ಮನಿನ್ನೆ ಸೊ ದ ದ ದ ದ ವೆರಿ ಫ್ಲುಯೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನ್ಅಬ್ಯಾಶಡ್ ವ್ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅನ್ಯಸ್ವರಾಸ್ Mm. the copy uh, mm. for in fact dikshitar was a little more careful i would say he he was aware of vivadi swaras and all that and he always tried to please everybody tyagaraja had no such uh, pretensions <laughs> he was saying this is beautiful i am going to sing it this way mm. that is why tyagaraja dealt with so many vivad so called vivadi ragas mm. you know mm. even his uh, mm, ಕಮಲಾಪ್ತ ಕೂಲ ಕಲಶಾಬಿಚಂದ್ರವೈಯನು ಕರುಣ ಸಮೂದ ಅನ್ಅಬ್ಯಾಶಡ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಾಕಲಿ ನಿಷಾದ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಕೈಸಿಕ ನಿಷಾದ ವೆರ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ದೀಕ್ಷಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ಸ್ಟಿಲ್ ವೆರಿ ವೆರಿ ಕೇರ್ಫುಲ್ ಹೌ ಹಿ ಟ್ರೆಡ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೋ ಇನ್ ರಂಗ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಕಲಿ ನಿಷಾದ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಹಿಡನ್ ಅಟ್ 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 ಅ ಸಬ್ ಟೆರೇನಿಯನ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಯು ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ so he still a little conservative so but well, yes the dikshitar had the opportunity in his life to him so so his integration of lot of north indian ragas you know like a dujavanti and etc is something which is very very is, uh, you know is so beautiful i agree but i agree tyagaraja tyagaraja too in in some of his vilamba kala krutis you are reminded of drupad uh, because these were they 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 probably they were saints they were rishis right it was not just what they heard physically they could correct. hear uh, sounds from all over the world i guess correct correct so that is so beautiful about it. Uh, very very people. well very well answered shri ram ji uh, I, i i very much in tune with what you are saying 
We yeah. do have a few more questions, but so considering the time you, it is in India, you can, maybe, you can ask me one or two questions, no problem. Okay. No, Balaji, would you like to yeah, go sure. ahead? Okay, yeah. I, so so one one question, very interesting one from Raji Padmanavan. As students aspiring to experience Nada, do you have any suggestions for mindful practice or listening? Yeah, um, it's a constantly moving process. Uh, you have to unhinge yourself from what you think is good music. It's important because many times uh, what we grow up with and our mind gets used to it and we think uh, that is what is beautiful. You know, whereas I will say search for your own sound. Search for a sound that makes you very happy that you are alive. Search for a sound that makes you want to go and practice. You know, Carnatic music especially has a lot of emphasis on samarthya, on the intellectual and mm. creative aspects of the music. That somewhere down the line, um, many uh, many great uh, musicians and artists and the Rasikas also have not given Nada or beautiful sound the primacy. It has gone more towards the Vyavahara, the Samarthya, the memory, the calculations, the creativity, etc. Whereas, as students, we have to we have a thing or two that we can learn from the primacy given to sound and voice and nada by uh, Hindustani music, especially in, when you listen. That's mm -hmm. why uh, without, uh, I, I am somebody who has had the opportunity to delve and learn seriously in both. Mm -hmm. And I'm still a student in both. So I, I see that one shadja of uh, Abhimsan Joshi makes me stop in my tracks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or one, one, one shadja of Kishori Amonkar or Bade Gulam or one Sangati of Amir Khasab will make me his slave forever. That kind of uh, impetus I miss, except for a few artists. I, I can appreciate, I can appreciate the, the great amount of uh, intellectual pursuit and uh, sadhana and the samarthya very much. And, and I am a student of that. Say, but then if nada is the most uncompromisable thing in your singing, then nothing can happen at the cost of nada. Correct. You cannot say, you cannot say, this is look at the creativity here or look at the complexity here. You know, I, I'm reminded of one small joke, if I may share. So, Edor Periya Bhagavadar, one big Bhagavadar was trying to sing in the upper octaves and uh, the, uh, you know, his voice gave way. He could not, could not execute it. So one Rasika in the front <laughs> laughed or rebuked or ridiculed or whatever, you know. So the Bhagavatar got very uh, annoyed and said, do you know how tough it is to sing up there, you know, in the high pitches? So this Rasika <laughs> retorted and said, if it was so difficult, why did you try it? <laughs> that is, if sound is being compromised, then it ceases to be music, however brilliant it might be intellectually. So for a music student, to pursue good rounded voice, good pleasant madhuram. When you say madhuradipate, the Devi as that, you have to pursue what you think is sweet. And all the great composers have stressed upon that, have stressed upon the beautiful aspect of the voice, how it has to be, how it has to, your, your, when you practice, even Sarali Varase, you know, the people at home, your brother, sister, your mother, father, your friends should flock to your room and say, hey, mm. this sound is so beautiful. Because that is what is the universal paradigm. Mm. It is your, inter your intellectuality and your creativity is going to be, is going to change. Absolutely. It's going to, it, it has always varied through time. Correct? What I agree. Think is, yeah. So, and also to unhinge oneself from one's likes and dislikes. Because sometimes they are such a big... Uh, uh, source of, uh, you know, you cannot grow out of it, but one has to force. So if you like a particular artist, make sure you like him or her for the good reasons. Mm. Make sure that person who's inspiring you is, uh, you know, has focused on nada, has focused on good sound. Correct. 
Correct. So, and you also keep pursuing that in every aspect of your rendition, in Manodharma, mm-hmm. in Kalpana Swara, while you sing a Kriti, your pronunciation, your diction, everything has to be beautiful and uh, mm-hmm. Madhuram, you know, and and that and automatically some doors will open. So when you enter in the realm of sound, there is ideas of uh, resonance, you know, voice being resonant, mm-hmm. voice being in absolute. Sruti alignment, Apri Sruti Sendh Paradhe, Ella Brikas, Malaga Rikarde, not a single harshness, anything which is not pleasant sounding. And, and something which can convey a great variety of bhavas. Because the human voice is so versatile. Every great Indian instrument is so versatile. You know, you hear one uh, note of uh, Mali flute, um, TR Mahalingam. And then you know it is Mali. How come? It's because a greatly internalized sound that Mali has made his own. Avarod Avarod Nada. MDR is Avarod Nada. Ramnath Krishna Avarod Nada. MS Subalakshmi Avarod Nada. So every, for everybody from the student time itself, if that search is on, then you will have a very beautiful journey. Thank you, sir. So since you, you so eloquently you know, talked about Nada and also the role of Hindustani. Maybe we can end with you singing a very short Hindustani. <laughs> I will tell you that the pursuit of uh, uh, that that sound, which will totally elevate you, is what great musicians have always pursued. Up to a certain stage, it is the human instincts for uh, uh, impressing, you know, uh, for showing your samarthya and your uh, vidvat. Because Vidvat is, we have to we have to make sure that Vidvat and Nada are not confused. Vidvat is, is in a own or is, is in its own place. The pursuit of Nada is in its own place. So great musicians have always said, you know, I wish I can hit one Shadja beautifully in my lifetime. I will consider my life to be successful. That's the kind of commitment to Nada that some of the great artists have. You know. What raga would you like me to say? Anything particular that you you like or you want to listen to? Your your Anything choice. Specific? Yeah. yeah, since this is binding up, I shall uh, invoke Bhavani in the raga Sindhu Bhairavi. Padani da pa da maga Padani da sari sa Padani sari ga ga Sare mare sa Ni sa da pa Ga pa ni ni da ga Ga ma pa ma ga ma di sa Bhavani Dayani Bhavani Dayani Mahabak Bani Mahabak Bani Suranara Muni Jagajani Sakala Buddha Gyani Bhavani Dayani Bhavani Dayani Mahabak Bani Suranara Muni Jagajani Sakala Buddha Gyani Bhavani Gyani Bhavani Dayani Now when I see that Bhavani itself, I think there is such a such a long way for me to go in just getting Dhaivata, Shadja and Sadja. Dasasa <laughs> That's all it is. Bhavani Bhavani Bhavani. How fine that 
the tikara can be when i when i call out the goddess's uh, name bhava how beautiful that akara can be how it can the effort is how it can touch somebody else very powerful that as i revel in the presence of the goddess and so to the listener so that i'm i'm not trying to do anything else and like i said this is a long way ahead where the moment i utter or sing bhavani me and the listener are both transported to a world where everything is so beautiful bhavani dayani mahabak bani suranaram jagajani sakala muda jani bhavani dayani as i sing i invoke the blessings of the raga devat sindhu bhairavi the goddess has to bless me to be able to for me to um, uh, get achieve raga some semblance of nada right so it's a, it, that's why the most important take away for me from tyagaraj's approach to nada is that without that surrender without invoking uh, bhagwan in whatever way nada continues to be a very limited and uh, not necessarily a liberating concept it remains very earth bound however big a scholar you are how much ever research you do on nada that's why everywhere he says that bhakti has to be there that bhakti only then that nada will elevate you you know so that that is a very important it is it, it's not a, a matter of religiousness it's a matter of understanding the reality of creation understanding the reality of the universe and bowing down to that it's more a matter of recognizing yourself as a part of this wonderful creation so it is that humility also which is with nada i believe oh. that is a kuku is also nada somewhere else brahma varti says tekum oli lillam nandalala right so i always tell my students you know the the very irritating sound that a chalk across a black board or when somebody pulls a chair you know so subramanya bharati is able to see nandalala even in that right or the most irritating sound of a person speaking who you don't like all those things as far as subramanya bharati is nada of the lord correct so we realize that we are we are so limited in the ways we uh, we live our lives so when you are singing or when you are listening to music it's one glimpse of that universal uh, you know beauty that you 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 have an opportunity to partake of so that so nada is up to you what you want bhavani dayani mahabak bani suranaramuni jagajani the sangati of mind every attempt of mind has to have the sense of surrender this is what tyagaraja teaches you suranaramuni jagajani sakala buddha jani bhavani bhavani dayani bhavani 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 thank you so much amazing shri ram ji oh, that was a very very nice finale uh we don't want to let you go but uh, you know reality hits and uh, we need to thank you for it one more time for for all your enlightened thought and also in this at, at in my opinion it's a very apt topic uh, you know in these times especially and uh, we are sw uh, swimming towards getting into a live uh, uh, 
our Tyagaraja Aradhana in March. And with, with everybody's blessings, we would, uh, you know, hope to be a grand success and open the door for live programming. Um, and, and in that context, I would like to say thank you to everybody who participated today, uh, to also Sriram's family who have joined in the Zoom session. Thank you to all of you. And uh, I would just like to remind you of the live uh, event uh, in March, uh, we will be adhering to the CDC guidelines and all of the information is on shruti.org. Um, uh, uh, we will be having uh, individual presentation of uh, uh, singers from the community and then we'll also have a full length concert by Vidushi Vani Ra Ra Ramamurthy and party. Um, I also want to uh, re uh, reach out to all of you to see if any one of you, if you're interested, in, in contributing an article or, uh, or a quiz or anything for the uh, souvenir that we released during the Tyagaraja Aradhana in March. If you're interested, please reach out to one of us and uh, we can certainly accommodate that in the, in the souvenir. It has to be given by the 5th of March and we can accommodate that. But otherwise, uh, thank you very much for a great beginning to an awesome weekend. And uh, thank you, Shiramji, once again for this. I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm very happy to have been part of this. Uh, for me, uh, every every program and every lectern is an opportunity for me to learn something, for me to grow. And so, thanks to you from my side also. I I should thank um, Revati Ma'am and all the all the office bearers of this wonderful Shruti at Philadelphia. And uh, it has been a great joy for me. And looking forward to seeing you all uh, live. Sometime, sometime in the near future, and yeah, all the best to your to your efforts and uh, to, to keep this wonderful culture and music of ours and music and dance and arts alive is such a giving part of yourself to uh, the cause of this great Indian culture of ours is something which is uh, really commendable and I I congratulate all of you for that and I hope to see you all very soon. Stay safe. And uh, stay healthy and stay happy, stay musical. Thank you. Om Sri Guru Bhyo Namaha. Namaste. Thank you very much.